An interesting interview came out about an animator who is talking about the situation in the industry at the moment that might like be a clear understanding why a lot of the stuff that we've been receiving recently hasn't been up to snuff than previous seasons. I'm going to read you a little bit of the article for you right now that was provided thanks to like Otaka Magazine. The animator Mai Matsuda, who aside from working as a key animator on dozens of series, was a chief animator director on Shokugeki no Soma Food Wars and character designer on King of Prism. Matsuda broke down the numbers writing that even does the 40 shows which had about 300 shots per episode, totaling 12,000 shots. Now, what you're pretty much saying is like, this is how many shots are like different parts of that episode that you're going to need. Obviously, this could uh, like actually change the amount, like how much you're going to be doing in an episode. Something like that. Insane amount of animation, a whole bunch of different keyframes. If you ask about each keyframer to do 30 shots, that means you need 400 animators. That doesn't include opening, ending, or theatrical films like, like anime movies, or even releasing compilation movies. Much less even getting a head start on next season, she added in another tweet. The anime continued by saying she'd like to see those uh, like in charge reconsider the numbers of series being made, considering the huge gap between what's planned and what's the actual manpower available. She offered one potential solution for more studios to hire their own dedicated animated stats than relying on on freelancers. Now here's one thing that's very interesting about this and this explains a lot about a couple of series that had sequels that kind of came out. I'm mainly going to be talking about the ones uh, especially like one Dragon Ball Super is definitely going to be talking about one as well and one of its big issue. Alongside with Gintama's uh, latest season had a few little animation uh, clicks as well and Fairy Tale's second half as well definitely all, like, was a bit of a problem. Now many out of these three series as well a lot of this like does go is that yeah a lot of freelancer people come out and it's like, you know, they don't particularly care too much. They're just here to do their job. Mainly the fact that, like, with A1 Pictures, they especially got other people to do Fairy Tale Season 2. It was like a parent, like, little animated company that they had under their wing. And it was like, alright, you pretty much, you're, you're taking the reins in charge. And, well, it just wasn't up to snuff than what the first season's huge animation quality was. I mean, a lot of people had that was the biggest complaint of them in Fairy Tale was like honestly it's like that was one of those most standout things is that A1 made the thing absolutely beautiful and the fact that it's like it was still under A1's like ring and they did have some of the people there still working on it but it just didn't look like for Magni and gorgeously beautiful than what the actual first trailers were telling us same thing with Gintama Gintama I believe wasn't done by Sunrise most of it. it had a few couple animes from there but it was mainly done by other people alongside that you can include that to a bunch of other series so Dragon Ball Super was done by a ton a ton of new rookies and I'm like you gave a brand a big franchise like that to brand new people who probably haven't worked that long in the industry and but yet you'll get it to like they won't work on something that's a little bit small title a big issue with this is that is that there are too many shows and I will uh, absolutely agree with that it's like yeah there, it's just too much out at the moment like where it's like instead of like it's like the business move is just like it should be like okay let's push some stuff out see what sticks to the wall let's see which is popular and if not we're gonna add it but the thing is with like Japanese anime, so uh, they just keep throwing no, another show, another show, another show, anime, anime, like, and they just keep pushing out. Oh, right, this are twelve, this are twelve, twenty-four, and then the occasional series will have about fifty episodes instead of like working on one series that you particularly really like and think that's actually going to do well by gauging like how much you know like people really want to see an adaptation of this. Instead, they're going to just put, uh, keep pushing out some of the stuff that personally not a lot of people really wanted or demanded. That's why you see a lot of these animes like right at the very end and all that. You see like, oh, well, that looked actually very shitty and shitty anime. Yeah, because there was no like potential. They pretty much gave up. That's why you see like a lot of things like, like example, Akame Got Killed didn't do too very well in Japan. So that's why it's kind of ending was a little bit mm, like to the bit of there. Like also that does have to play in with like the directors and the writers and all that. Adding into it as well. Even as well, like adding into the manga here as well. Don't know where app but that's a big problem with like Japanese animation a lot of people don't understand how actually tricky it is to even animate you have to keep going over shot over shot over shot and those big gorgeous fight scenes that you like see all the time in your favorite shows and all that yeah that takes a lot especially as one show that I'm definitely going to praise for its amazing and gorgeous animation although personally I'm not too big into the show is the new ice skating anime Yuri on ice there was a scene in 
in there that had some amazing, gorgeous animation, beautiful composition, and it was absolutely stunning. But guess what? Guess how many people that probably took to either make that scene and how many people had to work overtime. And the fact is, like, that's coming out with a lot of other shows, and I think that's the problem with anime studios. I think they need to keep releasing stuff to, you know, keep getting the make and the money. But I feel like it would work better as saying, rather than having a loss on trying to test out so many things, why don't you gauge, like, you know, like, how, who wants an adaptation? Who generally wants that? And it's like, who wants to adaptate this? And it's like, can we make something out of this? Can we do something? And it's like, clearly, I feel like that's how Japan works because most of the time, with the exceptions of these anime seasons, a lot of the time they kind of mess up on the first season or something, like, uh, they, and that's what's uh, leading into a lot of things. They, they kind of rush things too much and they don't think, okay, this is how we need to handle it as well. But they're pretty much saying, like, yeah, we'd rather have more own dedicated anime staff than just freelancers that are just, oh, I'm going to do a job. And I think definitely that's something. It's like, adding the, how we can improve this is definitely, I would say, if you have more people on your wing that you definitely know you can trust and not just people that are just sent here to do a job and they don't really give two shits about the project or anything of that matter. You need to lower down, I think, the amount of anime that's generally coming out. I know that that's a crazy thing. It's like, I want more anime to watch than that. But generally, you don't think about it like with people and all that. Generally, how many shows and all that do you generally watch a year and how much of them are actually really good shows? I can tell you a lot of the time, stuff that's probably coming out that's actually really good shows and all that, like pretty much come from anime studios and all that, that don't either have a lot of work on their plate. I can tell you one thing that the ReZero, that definitely helps through its source material, but as alongside as well, why Fox don't do a lot. They're normally a studio that kind of helps and cleans up other studios a lot of the time. They don't really do a lot of that. Same thing with stu uh, Studio Bones. Studio Bones really nearly keeps to themselves, and that's why most of their shows, like Bungo Stray Dogs, like uh, also as well My Hero Academia, look so goddamn amazing because they just don't overwork themselves. Like for example, like what like you see with like Toei Animation or A1 just goes at completely nuts by adapting a ton of shows. Even Sunrise still respect when they've got so many of these new Gundam series alongside with the Gintama. It's just it's a crazy amount and a lot of people can't handle it. It's definitely one part of the industry I would never personally want to ever be in. I'm not very great like drawer. I actually have dyspraxia so my hand-eye coordination is pretty much dog shit for the most part but that's generally something I would never ever want to actually go into. I can tell you for a fact that someone like me, I would never ever want to do something like that because I can tell like how much like strain it is. Let's be honest, my my drawing is absolute shit. Like it is absolute dog shit, and I know full well that the amount of time and hours and just effort and all that that you had to put in to survive in Japan's like working environment and school environment, it's just absolutely, it's just like near slave leather levels. It's like I feel like a lot more people you generally should if like it wouldn't be that much of a desperate thing to like get there. If like generally you could do this a lot better, and it's just like. I think Japan, like, are they try it kind of works, but at the same time, it's like, you're going to lose more as a business, and you've got to think of strategy, like, you need to actually push in shows and all that, that you know are going to be actually popular, enjoyable, and, like, you know, sometimes they can be a weird, like, sleeper hit, like, some series and all that do that, but still, I actually would recommend that. There needs to be a lot of change in, like, in the anime intro, and I definitely really enjoyed this article that uh, Matsuda actually gave to us. Let me know you guys in the comments down below. What did you actually generally think about this article? Like, was you actually generally interested in, like, how the anime industry is faring up at the moment and the fact that even they are going, there's too much oversaturation and the fact that this is costing on, like, higher quality shows. Like, the fact that we're just splitting ourselves way up too much and, like, kind of interesting to show you, like, a little glance at, like, how it works in that industry. But that's all for me. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you beautiful bastards, though, in another time.